Hello everyone and welcome to Alam Shah Weekly. And in this video, we're going to learn that how we can create composable view architecture using view builders in Swift UI. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's say that we have a requirement of creating a notification view where a person can display a notification. But it will be up to the user to display a notification in any format, meaning in a notification view in the body, they can display a simple text view. They can also display a segmented control. They can display a list. They can display a label, an image, whatever they want. So how would we structure our view? I'm going to go ahead and write the code in the same exact file, which is our content view. But in your actual application, you should create separate files for your separate views. I'm going to go ahead and start with creating a struct, and I will call it notification view. This is nothing more than a normal view, so it's going to go ahead and conform to the view protocol. It's going to have a body which will return some sort of a view. And for starting out, I'm just going to go ahead and say notification. I always like to start very, very simple. So now we have a notification view. Right over here in our body, I can go ahead and let's go ahead and just put it in the Z stack and you will see that why we are using a Z stack later on. But let's go ahead and put notification view. If I go ahead and refresh my view, you can see right there, it just says notification. We can go ahead and construct a view a little bit differently if you want. I mean, you can add a little bit of padding to it, you can add framing to it and whatever you want. Now, one of the things that we want is that we want to give the user the control, and by user, I mean the developer itself, the control to put anything in the notification. So let's say that if they want to pass the actual wording instead of notification, something else, they can actually do that. So I can go ahead and create probably a message property, and they can go ahead and pass when they're creating a particular notification, they have to pass a message. And the message can be anything. So let's just say uh, saved or success. You know, it doesn't really matter. And we can go ahead and display it right there. So instead of notification, we can go ahead and display message. If you run the example right now, it simply just says success because that's what you passed in over here. But now what if I want the notification to have a text like success, but I also want an image on the side. So this means that I can use a label control. So I can go ahead and use a label control. And I can go ahead and use kind of like a string over here and I can pass in the message. And for whatever the system string is, let's say system name. And uh, let's just say that I'm gonna say sun.max so that we can display some sort of a property for the sun. Oops, uh, let's go ahead and double check it. But what am I passing right over here? I don't think it has anything called. So let's go ahead and see. You can see system image, not system name. I think I call it system name. So over here, we can display a message. And over here, we can display some sort of a system image, which can be anything. And I'm just gonna say sun.max. And now you can see that it is now changed. Great, but now the requirement is that the developer who is trying to use a notification view, they want to display kind of like a much bigger image. So this means that maybe you can pass in the image over here, but you can see the problem right now. It's not really dynamic, meaning our notification view currently is based on the label or currently it is based on the text or something else. But what we want to do is we want our notification view to provide some sort of a scaffolding, a skeleton, a structure. But the actual body of the notification view can be conformed over here or can be constructed at the time of when you're actually using it. So this requires us to use something called a view builder. And view builder is nothing more than a closure that returns you views. And that is one of the features of Surf UI. 
So let's go ahead and see that how we can do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my notification view. And over here, I'm going to create a generic argument, content, which will be of type view. This means that we will use content, and that particular content should be of type view. Now, instead of the message, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, it's going to be content, and that will be a closure, and that closure is going to return content, which basically means going to return view in the end anyways. All right. So, and now we can go ahead and start constructing. Let's go ahead and just say over here, notification view. And now we can go ahead and start constructing our initializer. In the initializer, we have to pass in the content, which will be a closure, which will eventually return the content. Since we will assign this particular closure to the closure or the variable that we declared on line number 12, I'm just going to go ahead and assign it. It may complain that it has to have escaping stuff. So we, since we're assigning and retaining it, we will call it escaping. And we will also mark this with something called a view builder, which is a property wrapper. So now you can see that the notification view is a little bit different, which means that we can go ahead and call notification view and we can pass stuff to it. Kind of cool, right? I mean, it kind of becomes like a Z stack or some other view which is already available in SIF UI that we can actually pass in another view. So I can go ahead and pass in a text view over here, which can say anything I want. I mean, we can go ahead and say header if I want to. I can go ahead and wrap this around in a V stack just to show you that we can actually pass all of these different things. I can say content and I can say footer. So it's kind of up to me that whatever kind of a view I want to pass to my notification view. Currently in the notification view, we are not really displaying the actual content that you are passing. So how do we display that? It's kind of up to you. How do you want to display it? I can simply display it by simply calling self.content and calling a function. And that is going to call the function that you're passing, which will return this kind of a view. So if I go ahead and run the application right now, you can see that since I am passing all of this, it goes into the content. And then eventually when I call the content, which is a closure, it returns me the content, which is all of this right there. So this makes it a little bit more flexible because now it is the caller who is deciding that what kind of a display they want for the notification view. And the notification view itself might be doing some sort of a scaffolding, which means that notification view can go ahead and, you know, define some sort of a skeleton that it will provide. So I'm going to go ahead and update my notification view to provide a basic skeleton. This means that over here, the notification view is going to provide you a vStack. And in the vStack, we will have a, have a H stack, which will have a spacer. The content will be injected over here. And the spacer will be injected right there. Now, if I want some sort of a view to appear every time you're using a notification view, I can go ahead and put it right over here, like a header. This means that whatever content that I'm going to pass to the notification view, let's say the body of the notification view, will always have a header because this text is going to be living inside the content, which is later on injected on line number 23. So this part, kind of like the header, is already part of the notification view. And the sub views that we are injecting are basically passed over here on line number 36. So this gives you a lot of opportunity to create and decorate your notification view. Great. Now, what should we pass over here? Now, that is completely up to you, whatever you want to pass over here. So I can go ahead and pass something over here. I can go ahead and say label. And in the label, let's go ahead and click over here. In the label, we can have many different options. I can use system name. And I can say 
current weather 72 Fahrenheit. And for system image, I can use any anything I want. I'm just going to use sun.max. And there we go. It actually displays over there. Let's go ahead and build that. Now, if I want my notification view to have other properties, like maybe you should be able to change the color of the notification view. Maybe it is the informational message or error message or warning message or just a primary kind of a message. We can actually do that. So going back to the notification view, I'm going to go ahead and add a function to my notification view, which will be called set type. Set type is a function that is only available on the notification view, and it is based on whatever the notification type that you're going to pass. The notification type is simply an enum, which we can declare right there, which is going to tell us that what kind of a notification we are performing. It is a primary notification, error, info, or warning. So this means that now we can call set type on our notification view. And we can even decorate it. So let's go ahead and call on the actual notification view, which is right there. We can actually call set type. What type of a notification? Let's go ahead and go with primary, which is kind of like the default notification. And you can see the color is actually changing, right? If you want your label to be of different color, then you do have a complete control of changing your labels to different color. Now, one of the things that we want to do is we want to make sure that our notification has rounded corners. I can go ahead and write the code over here, but probably a good idea would be to use some sort of a extension that will always allow you to round the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and create an extension on the view since this can be applied to most of the views. And I can say rounded radius cg float and we will try to give it a default value of 25 uh, if you don't pass anything then it will be 25 or else it will be something else now i can say self dot clip and self in this case will be the view on which you're calling this and we can perform a clip shape now whatever type of a clip shape that you want i'm just going to go ahead go with the rounded rectangle we're going to pass in the radius and the style is continuous. Now you can also pass continuous or the style right there in the rounded if you want to, but for now that is perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and build it. Let's go back to our content view. And now if we want to make sure that our view, the notification view or any view is actually rounded, we can simply go ahead and call rounded. And you can see it's rounded. Now I can go ahead, I have complete control, so I can go ahead and add a little bit of more padding. And I can also go ahead and add a bit of animation if you want. So right now, obviously, there is no animation going on, but I, if I want to, I can animate this also. For animation, the first thing I would do is just to show you the animation, I'm going to go ahead and add a button to our main content view. And the button itself is going to say show notification show notification and so just a simple button all right now the button right now is not really visible i think it's because it's behind the uh, current weather so that's why you can't really see the actual button itself because it's a z stack what we are going to do is we are going to create a state variable so right there which is going to toggle between notification shown and notification not shown so i'm going to go ahead and say notification shown dot toggle and based on the value of notification shown so i can say notification shown if it is shown then we are going to say hide notification if it is not shown then i'm just going to go ahead and say show notification right Let's go ahead and run this. Okay. Now, right now, our notification is shown anyways. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the notification is a little bit offset. So I can go ahead and provide an offset of Y. And if the notification is actually shown, 
then we will go ahead and take the screen size dot height and we will divide it by three or else we will go ahead and use screen size dot height rule which is kind of meaning that the notification is now hidden we also want to animate so i'm just going to go ahead and pass animation and we can perform a spring animation let's go ahead and run our app now if i click on show and hide notification it kind of comes up it's a bit of a spring animation you can see it's a bit springy if I want to go ahead and change this particular notification, it's mostly, let's say that if it's an error or something, I can go ahead and say error. And I can change this and I can say, oops, something bad happened. And obviously you can change the system image to something else also if you want. But now it kind of looks like that. Same thing, you can go ahead and change this to info or warning to change the color or something else. So this is one of the ways that you can create more of a composable architecture or composable views. You can see that we allowed our notification view to act as a higher order view, which can take in other views and then display it. This allows opportunity to the developer, to the client, to use the notification view and also to provide different aspects like different controls inside your notification. Now you can also go ahead and display kind of like the title or anything related to that. So that is going to work. Other things that you should do with the notification view is you should be able to add all of these things in the notification view also. And that is something that I will cover probably later in the future videos, but we can also go ahead and add these things inside the notification so that it is completely becoming one very simple control where you will have to pass in the notification shown or hide. And then based on that, it will always perform these kind of animations. All right. So there you have it, creating higher order views or creating more composable views in Swift UI using view builders if you like this video and want to support my channel then the best way would be to check out my udemy courses you can see that i have recently released a brand new course on core data in ios which is using surf ui so definitely check that one out if you're interested in learning about surf ui then check out my 22 plus hour course on surf ui and i have many different courses on surf ui as you can see uh, this one is a highest rated course which actually talks about Surf UI using MVVM design pattern. So I have a lot of different courses with Surf UI, and I think you should definitely check them out. Also, if you are just feeling generous, then I would love to have a cup of coffee. And you can go to ko-fi.com slash sharp and buy me a cup of coffee to show your support and generosity. Thank you so much, and I really hope that you have enjoyed the video.